Uh, welcome to the show this morning. It's a very beautiful Thursday morning, April the 27th, three days to the end of the month. So we'll say a big welcome to morning spring this morning on Western Spring Television. We're reaching you live from Star Times Channel 190 on the DTT platform. And you can also follow us on all our social media handles to watch us live and follow uh, all the conversations that we have for you here on this program and on other programs. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Western Spring Television. Follow us and uh, subscribe so you can get notifications of our programs as they happen live and as they are uploaded for your viewing and listening pleasure. My name is Emmanuel Lujadugele. So good to have you on the show this morning. It's a day before the weekend. Hmm. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday edition of the Morning Spring on Western Spring Television. I'm Timmy Tokwe Ajujalawala. Good morning. Well, still looking at the papers for you on, on the show, we bring you three segments. We look at the dailies, we look at um, interviews with our guests and experts, analysts, and we also bring you uh, spring trends where we tell you who is trending, or what is trending on social media, and why they are trending, and what people have to say about all of those things. I will go on a quick break now when we come back. We'll be on the faces of the paper showing you what's happening all around the country. Well, welcome back. As usual, begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. And the banner headline is about the crisis currently rocking in North Africa, uh, in Sudan. Sudan conflict, students lament slow evacuation, federal government to pay $1.2 million. So on page two, uh, Ryder says only 15 out of 40 buses ready on Wednesday conveyed 750. That's according to the student. And the minister says cost covers 19 hour journey security from Sudan to Cairo. Oh. Very, very um, un uncomfortable situation yes. there. You know, 40 buses were built to be ready, and only yes, 15. Only 15. And then the more disheartening thing is only 750 people were, you know, able to be conveyed out of Sudan. And this is, um, I'm sure, if we were to go by the ceasefire agreement, it was supposed to be a 72 hour truce, and that ended yesterday. And so if that ended yesterday, it means that evacuations now would be more, you know, tedious and rougher than it was supposed to be. You know, people were trying to get their people out during the 72 hours to use it judiciously. But the federal government, people have been saying that they were slow, you know, in acting. And now even the evacuations are slow. Just imagine 15 out of 40 buses were ready. The other day, it was supposed to be a Tuesday. The evacuations were supposed to start on Tuesday, but it extended to Wednesday, and they said logistic problems. So what happened yesterday again? These are the things we need to look at. But I think we'll be revisiting the Sudan um, story. We need to know what is happening, what uh, seems to be the problem of the federal government, you know, problems they are encountering, and all of that. But we just hope that... All of these people that are stranded in Sudan or, you know, that their lives are being endangered can just get out safe and be reunited with their families. Mm. Well, some insight into the Sudan crisis there. Uh, Nigeria will be paying $1.2 million yeah. to cover the 19-hour journey and security from Sudan to Cairo. A lot of the bottom started, but just below that story, see pictures some Nigerians at the registration point in Sudan before the evacuation to Cairo, Egypt on Wednesday. See the picture of the buses there too, that were used to convey these you know. Nigerians. Huh. At the bottom strip, 4,000 trucks to visit Lekki Port daily. It's coming from the TTP on page 26. It's at the bottom strip of the paper there, huh. uh, Punch newspaper. And the red story, it's the Lagos State Government demolishes illegal buildings on Banana Island. Huh. On pages 4 yeah. and 5. It's the coming, state government demolishes illegal yes. buildings on Banana yeah. Island. It's coming at a very good time. Mm. They need to, you know, have some sort of sanity in all of the buildings that we're having. Substandard buildings, you know, um, and um, illegal buildings too. Mm. We need to have them demolished. Yeah, 
business. It's time to have all those things demolished. Now, police are in Lagos spare parts dealer for assaulting housewife. Uh -huh. Police are in Lagos spare part dealer assaulting housewife. That's on page four of the punch newspaper at the bottom strip there page four of the bottom of the punch newspaper this morning above the name plate obi attacks INEC for defending tunubu article claims victory page mm. eight now we're back to the uh, you, you know back and forth between the leading or those who spearheaded the presidential race, mm -hmm. you know, I will be attacking INEC for defending Tinubu or Tinubu's claiming victory, article claiming victory. Well, I think that it's just rational for INEC to, to, to defend whoever uh, emerges win of mm -hmm. their election. I don't expect INEC to say, oh, we conducted the mm -hmm. terrible election, mm -hmm. whoever yes. won didn't win, mm -hmm. you know, just like that. But that's all. That's well on page eight. You can get more more of that story on the eighth page of the punch newspaper this morning and uh page nine the united nations is saying scarcity crippled nigeria's economy uh, well that's very very obvious you don't you don't need um the united said, nations or experts to tell you yeah. that we really had it bad mm. uh during the, the scarcity yeah. it almost grounds the economy to a halt mm -hmm. so many things um, couldn't move or couldn't work because of the cash. Yes, scarcity. and the, the question has been to what to what end? What was the you know purpose for that? Because you know you said naira redesign. People are hardly seeing the new naira notes outside now. It was just like you were waiting for the president to ask you to return the old notes into circulation. I I, I was looking at people's you know. And, you know, I've been looking to see the new notes. I've not been given the new notes in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And ever since it has been, um, the old notes have been brought back into circulation. So to what end? What was the suffering for? People suffered a lot. And we have nothing to show for it. Only backlog of, of debts and, you know, bad economy right now to show for it. It's, it's, it's really terrible. We do things in a haste. We don't think through. And then all of our policies are just taking us to, you know, towards a, a dead end. Let me just put it that way. Mm. All of our policies seeming not to be favorable to even not at those all. of us who are meant to be the target of the policy. Well, on page eight, Tinubu speaker aspirants meet on zoning behind closed oh. doors. Tunubu speaker aspirant meet on zoning behind closed doors. As on page eight of the newspaper, the punch newspaper this morning. All right, seems that's all we have on the punch newspaper. Moving mm. on to the Daily Trust newspaper. The headline says National Dynamics votes delivery to determine NAS leadership. And the writers, Tinubu Shatima, APC leaders hold maiden meeting. Push for Northwest, South, South, Southeast Senate presidency intensifies. Ruling party walking on tightrope. That's according to Carrie. A lot of, you know, permutations still. Like, was, like we saw in the punch newspaper and even here too. Um, Sinubu, his deputy elect and um, other APC leaders are holding maiden meeting. You know. They need to strategize on how to move the nation forward when they eventually get to power. And all of the um, lobbyings as well for, you know, the Senate presidency is also going on. And a lot of things. But more of that story is on page four of the Daily Trust. Nigerians likely among as Kenya church court death toll hits nine to five. Nigerians likely among us. Kenya church court death toll hits 95. Yeah. I was quite worried on Saturday. As, mm. as of Saturday, I think it was about 13, between 13 and 30 graves that had been found. You know, the pastor there who asks his church members to starve to death mm. and some other very diabolical things that happened in, on that, in that church in Kenya. Uh, the, the death toll now at 95, there's 95 people 
who have lost their lives because of some person's you know yes it's 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 terrible yeah. and i hope that he served the kind of justice that he, yeah, deserves. he deserves yes well we hope that the people can move past that and mm. it's going to be a very very rough road for them because lots of families are going to be affected it would take god and lots of um encouragement to move past the period yes, so moving right. on from that story to page 12 I have no drug case, dual citizenship scandal. Atiku replies to mm. <laughs> Well, on page six, two soldiers. And that's him again. The, yes. the, we're back to the politicking era where mm. everyone is throwing jabs at the other person, yes. you know, trying to discredit, discredit the, other. the other person and paint themselves to be, you know, mm. you know, it's just, it's just part of the political season. Politicians. Mm mod sling a lot throw things at each other mm. and let each other know that mm. we have some of your secrets with us i know some of your secrets it's just we like seem that. to have a lot of this type of politics in in nigeria in africa mm, well it's not we, just it's just not it's not just um in in nigeria africa mm. but i think the difference is the mm. fact that in other climes voters are still able to separate some of mm. these things and they do not let them cloud their judgment yeah, and they vote mm. based on issues and not all of this character wow. assassination yes. and um, blackmail all right on page six two soldiers 15 villagers killed in benway two soldiers 15 villagers killed in benway the benway crisis again is is, is coming back to the fore and we're having more deaths in benway we hope that we can be, we can go above all of the security issues at this period. But that's on page six of the Daily Trust. I'm moving up to just below the nameplate. Kanu Kaduna Road, Second Niger Bridge, ready May 15. That's according to the FG. The federal government is saying, let me not say promising now, we're saying that by May 15, the Kanu Kaduna Road and the Niger Bridge, second Niger Bridge, would be ready for people's use come May 15. Mm, and on page, that's, that's good news. Yes, that's good news, really. It is. On page 31, BON rejects planned auction of 600 megahertz broadcast spectrum by NCC. That's according to um, BON. BON is rejecting planned auction of that, you know, par broadcast spectrum by NCC. So that's on page 31. And on page 7, Sudan, federal government spends 560 million naira to evacuate Nigerians by road. The other time, we had 150 million. And now it's now risen it's to 561 million. No, on the punch, it was $1.2 million. Dollars. Yes. Do the conversion so and then get the some conversion. Yeah. So we, I don't know how the sum seemed to have grown from 150 million to 560 million. And even when we heard that 150 million, we knew it was 40 buses. It's still the same number of people. Mm -hmm. So how come it has gone to 560 million? We don't know. We get more of that story on page seven of the Daily Trust. But that's all that we have on the daily trust this well morning. we have two more papers for you well let's go on a break now when we come back we'll bring you the rest of the papers The name 
Adolf Hitler exudes a gale of bows from millions of people who are victims of his autocratic rule and love from fanatical supporters of his imperial aggression. Born April 20, 1889, at a small Austrian town sandwiched between Austro German frontier, Adolf Hitler spent most of his childhood in Linz, the capital of Upper Austria. As a very prominent stakeholder in the horrific events of conflicts in Europe, Adolf Hitler could simply go off as the sole mover of the Second World War. 40 million Jews were murdered in the gas chambers of various Nazi camps on the orders of Adolf Hitler. Thousands of Adolf Hitlers still live in Germany today, but the majority of them are elderly and were named before the end of the Second World War. As the name pales into vanishing rarity, 13 children according to official records were named Adolf Hitler between 2006 and 2013. Western Spring Television identifies Adolf Hitler as a major character in history. Arrested. Affected. Sound. Found. What do we see? What do we say? Flowing from a spring. A fact A to Z. Check and confirm. Eva is pounding current events, traveling down from the business gist to the globally arising happenings, to the sports news, to the bittersweet infos. Guided transmission, even diffusion, vast and fast. Detailed facts are fled. Within seconds, nuggets of words that flew across borders are fired. Stories short and long, wrapped in bundles of words, broken and dissected as it is, except misheard. This is the news as it is. Here are five amazing fun facts I bet you never knew about Christianity. Number one, there are over 2.4 billion Christians worldwide. Amazing fun fact number two, the Bible is one of the best-selling books of all time, with more than 100 million copies sold every year. Most Christians believe in heaven and hell. The Bible is the most translated book in the world, with more than 3,000 languages. Amazing fun fact number five. Most Christians throw science out of the window without realizing that most scientists are Christians. Hello, I am Pastor Steve Akinwumi. And I am Dr. Adeoye Oyewale. Join us as we highlight and discuss day-to-day -day issues pertaining to the day-to-day -day living of every Christian. Issues in Christendom shows every Sunday on Western Spring Television, Channel 190, only on Star Times. According to the words of Michael Forbes, one who never asks questions, either knows everything or nothing. Watch me as I ask the questions you think no one wants to answer. Even questions, it appears no one has got the guts to ask. My name is Femi Adifina and I've got the gun. Let's ask the pertinent questions and watch as we get answers. Sports is a culture on its own. It has its own language, its own people, with their own way of life. Goal! The world 
world of sports is never void of actions, stories, dramas, and scandals. I guess you need a sports show that can walk the walk and talk the talk. On this show, we answer all your sporting questions. The whens, the whys, the wheres, and even the what ifs. Sports Spring is that show that will give you that new lease of life you've been looking for in sport journalism. Join me, Joseph Atewe. And your sports Amazon, Nengi Ennis. On this station, Western Spring Television, Channel 190, only on Star Times. Let's talk sports. Let's speak the most universal language of the world. Turn it up! It's the wild, wild west. And Western Spring Television is pulling out all the stops to make sure that you don't miss out on every of the fun and happenings around you. Yup, we've got you covered because your girl got all the juiciest tidbits and entertainment news from around the world. Cross over to the chocolatey side of entertainment. Join me, Chocolate Cassie, on Eccentric as we take you into every bit of the juiciest news, fashion, music, movie updates, and other trendy conversations. Together on the show, we'll get personal with your favorite celebrities via phone call, Zoom, or even live here in the studio. Eccentric will be shown on your TV screen on Western Spring Television, channel 190, only on Star Time. This iconic African presents the narrative of a man destined Welcome back to the show. Welcome back. Welcome back. Still morning, spring on Western Spring Television. If you're joining us for the first time, you know, we bring you newspaper reviews, look at the interview segment, and also try to uh, tell you what is happening on social media the conversation is going on there well let's go back to the papers now with the nation the nation newspaper let's go back there banner headline says tinubu apc target consensus senate president speaker ruling party favors christian to lead red chamber and you can see a picture um okay that's not the picture but we we did see some pictures on, on social media yesterday about the meeting uh -huh. between the, the APC and uh, the, that's the NWC of the APC now and president yes. elect uh, Tinubu, as well as um, some other party big wigs to decide on who becomes Senate president and speaker of the party of the National Assembly. Well, at the bottom, at the, just below that story, there election petition article B attack INEC PDP Labour Party candidates reply Tinubu. And, um, you know, that's that's just um. That's the that's the other um, angle to all of the what's it called now? Petitions. The petitions and the the, the, the back and forth yes. between politicians. Oh. You know. Well, that's at page six. You can get more of that story on the nation. And uh, beside that, five hundred Nigerians evacuated to Egypt in ten buses. But we were reporting. Uh, 750 on the on the punch yes, earlier. 15 buses, mm. not 10. Now some conflicting figures, yeah. you know, still coming up. But that's expected at I this point. I guess Nigeria has not given a formal statement. Mm. If they have, then we should have clear picture as to the number of figure of people. I mean, the figure of people that have been evacuated, and the number of buses that have been used already. All right. So the riders there are 13 stranded students allowed into Ethiopia. Fighting continues despite 72 hours ceasefire. Mm. Uh, that's on page four of the Nation newspaper this morning. Uh, and at the bottom strip, Wiki Tinubu to inaugurate project in Rivers, May 3rd. Tinubu to inaugurate 
project in reverse make third uh, binani withdraws suit on page two that's some interesting mm, one actually mm. Mm -hmm. quite surprising too but it's interesting all the same well a lot of persons were expecting that she would go um all, all the way to, mm. to to fight for her mandate that she mm. said was was stolen mm. but it's, it's interesting to see that she's uh withdrawing her, her suit it i was, wonder on what she grounds she must have been advised accordingly mm. probably by her um you know legal advices and all of that and she took it mm. well still moving on still on the nation newspaper uh just above the banner headline PSC dismisses three ASPs, reduces ranks of five others. Mm. PSC dismisses three ASPs, dis reduces ranks, ranks of five three. others. That's on page five. And on page 25, Transcorp Group's revenue hits 135 billion naira. Mm. Mm. But above the nameplate, Nigeria Air will fly before May 29, Minister insists. Hmm. That's on page two of the Nation newspaper this morning. Well, let's see how it goes. May 29 is just around the corner. And it says before May 29, we'll have Nigeria Air. It's a good thing to look forward to. Let's see what happens, how this pulls through. And if we have, you know, the metro to sustain, you know, this particular feat. It's a good one. It's going to be an improvement to um, our aviation, um, the aviation sector. And it's going to be a very good feather in our cap. But let's see how it goes. Well, so let's move on. Lagos government, Orlando partner in electric bus delivery. Mm. Adders influx into Undo forest worries Amotek. Mm. And uh, Lagos begins demolition of buildings on Banana Island. Mm. Now that's all on the nation. Page three is where you get that story about the demolition. Well, on the Guardian newspaper, the headline says subsidy removal, marketers in limbo over implementation. $15.1 billion forex demand fulfill importation and that's on page six of the guardian newspaper well another story that says court strikes out efcc suit against kogi governor yaya Bilo over asset for feature mm. court strikes out efcc suit against kogi governor yaya Bilo over asset for feature and that is on page seven of the guardian newspaper I'm an encumbered by scandals. Atiku replies to Nubu's serial loser jab. <laughs> I'm an encumbered by scandals. Atiku replies to Nubu's serial loser jab. And that is on page eight of, on page six rather, of The Guardian. We can see lots of um, back and forth between all of the presidential candidates and the president elect on the faces of the papers this morning. Another says Nigeria has highest number of collapsed buildings in Africa, says SONDG on page seven. This is not a good one at all for Nigeria. It's another another um another smear, you know. On very, our, very, very, um, very, very bad for us. Yes, and our dignity and um, not uh, the kind of statistics you want to be at um, all. getting familiar with. Mm. <laughs> well, we just hope that um, in in the next administration we can have um, officers that are up and doing with their own jobs and in their duties. That's the lay frustration. That delay frustration on Lagos Ibado endless road repair. Deaths delay frustration on Lagos Ibado endless road repair. And that is on page four. We seem to be having a lot of issues with our roads. 
the other one was Lagos and Belkuta extra. I mean, way that's around, um, 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 I can't recall the, that road now, but we saw that flooding yesterday. We saw people pushing their vehicles through the flood. And now Lagos Ibado, you know, is also ex experiencing endless road repair. And, and it's, it's causing a lot of deaths, um, deaths delay some traffic issues to yes. 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 Well, another story says, Rwanda takes delivery of Nigeria's first mass transit electric buses. Rwanda takes delivery of Nigeria's first mass transit electric buses. That is on page 18 of the Guardian newspaper. And the last story there on page 7 at the bottom strip of the Guardian newspaper, uncertainty trails the margins of new Alafi. Uncertainty trails the margins of new Alafi. That is... Yeah, I saw, I saw some um tweets but it was basically people just asking you know nobody was sure if there's been if there's been any process that has been done to you know pick up uh, or to install coronet and other laughing mm. you know yes so that's that is still in process and uh, it's having uncertainty trilling it around but then that's all we have on the Guardian newspaper this morning. And that's what we have on the papers for you this morning. Uh, that's what that's what we'll leave the show, the, the papers this morning. When we come back from this break, it will be time to bring in our guest and look at uh, some of the issues surrounding Nigeria's uh, petitions, mm -hmm. flying right, left, center, and of course, looking at uh, the, the confidence of Nigerians that they have in the judiciary. Stay with us. Arrested. Affected. Sound. Found. What do we see? What do we say? Flowing from a spring. A fact A to Z. Check and confirm. Ever is pounding current events. Traveling down from the business gist to the globally arising happenings, to the sports news, to the bittersweet infos. Guided transmission. Even diffusion, vast and fast, detailed facts are fled. Within seconds, nuggets of words that flew across borders are fired. Stories short and long, wrapped in bundles of words, broken and dissected as it is, except misheard. This is the news as it is. Here are five amazing fun facts I bet you never knew about Christianity. Number one, there are over 2.4 billion Christians worldwide. Amazing fun fact number two, the Bible is one of the best-selling books of all time. So welcome back to the show this morning. It's still morning spring on Western Spring Television. We're reaching you live from channel 910190 on Star Times DTT platform. But you can follow us on all our social media handles. That's where uh, we are reaching you this morning. We're joined live on the show. of to told you that we're going to, uh, you know, be talking, having some conversations around uh, the things happening in, in the country. Uh, but then let's let's take let's take another very uh, short break to bring you our guest. Bello, 
Prince Royal was born 6th of December 1910 at Rabba Village, Sokoto, northwestern Nigeria. His father was a district head and heir apparent to the Sultanate throne from the house of Osmano Danfodio, a religious and social reformer who brought the Habe dynasty under the Fulani Caliphate in the beginning of the 19th century. Ahmadu Bello raised the bar of political consciousness and participation when in 1944 he engineered the establishment of the Northern People's Congress NPC as the first political party in Northern Nigeria and the rallying point for politicians in the region before independence. History will not forget Ahmadu Bello for his charisma and political sagacity which provided easy passage for his kinsmen to assume political and administrative positions in Nigeria's post-independence era. The distinguished elder statesman Man and Sadown of Sokoto has his face on his country's 200 naira currency as a mark of honor to one of the architects of Nigeria's independence. Western Spring Television identifies Ahmadu Bello as a watershed character in history. All right, so thank you very much for staying with us. Can we start with um, our interview? We'll begin with um, our, our guest who is live via Zoom, Barrister Wally Ogwade. He's a legal practitioner, joins us live via Zoom. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, we've just and had to greet. Okay, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just said thank you for having me, and I want to greet all of you in the studio. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much. So let's let's start. We've just um, this is April. Elections finished in March, but there's still some anticipation, some drama to come. But I'd like to ask you first of all, how did you uh, assess the entire electoral process in the first place? Uh, unfortunately, uh, I can't hear you very well. But I want to know. Maybe the question is about the elections that just took place. Yeah, yes, I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm asking you. What is your assessment of this year's general elections, as well as that of the governorship and uh, state houses of assembly? Yes, this year's general election is cool. It's great. It's good. At least it's better. It and it's better than the last general elections we've been having. People may have misgivings, but you know that the number of casualties in terms of loss of lives and limbs are highly reduced. The result of post-election violence equally has seriously reduced. The, the issue of people uh, playing pranks, taking to the streets and so on, is equally reduced. And of course, in terms of, uh, the only problem I have is in terms of the number of voters. The number of voters as equally has reduced, so everything has reduced, both negative and positive. But be that as it may, by and large, uh, I, I do tell people that elections in Nigeria is a work in progress, and uh, what we know is that definitely uh, the 2027 general election, or even before the 2010 27 general election, we're going to quick start the next cycle again with the ones in Imo, Koki, I guess, Bielsa, and uh, those states, and eventually it will run off to a kitty and a show and a kitty. And then definitely by then we'll be fine-tuning the electoral process until 2027 when we'll have a general election again. Then we'll, we'll, we'll say we are good to go. 2727 too may not be, but at least we have struggled, those of us in the in, in the thematic area of electoral activities, will have struggled seriously to ensure that we we'll fine-tune the electoral act and we'll fine-tune the electoral process, the unequally the judicial process, to ensure sure that uh, everything is done for the betterment of Nigeria in terms of democracy, good governance, and the rule of law. 
Mm. All right. So in terms of the rule of law now, looking at the, the way uh, some of the information that came out, some of the, some of the you know, like the, the things that happened in Lagos, happened elsewhere in other parts of the country, do you think that the, the rule of law has been applied so far uh, in the way it should be uh, in the aftermath of that election? Are you satisfied with the number of arrests and persecutions that, that have not started, you know, going on as they should be? Yes, the rule of law has been applied. That's why we have some peace. We have some modicum of peace. We have some modicum of tranquility, as we say. And everybody is going about this, their own business and what we have done and what is being done is that uh, people have approached the, 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 the civil way of doing things that's going to the courts to ventilate their grievance and all. To me, that's the proper way to go. Uh, election is a game, like any game between contestants. There will be a winner and there will be a loser. And in some cases, the losers may not feel comfortable with that loss, and they will want to test their anger or their ventilate their, their grievance in the channel set up by the system governing that procedure. And the same thing is happening now. There is, a, there is a system governing the procedure after election, and people have gone to the tribunal. The other way around would have been that people will go onto the streets and begin to say, we no go agree, and so on, burning and maiming. And in as much that that is not there, then definitely to me, I'm okay with the, with the, with the situation right now. Mm. Okay, so now let's let's take a look at um, what happened in Adamawa State. The the aftermath of Adamawa issue now is that uh, you, I'm sure you followed it. You followed the the back and forth. What, what 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 did you read into that situation? The contravention of the Electoral Act by the REC and subsequent declaration of results, and the, what what followed the acceptance speech read by the the woman and the reactions generally. Yes, the, 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 the situation in Andama was a very, very gory thing and called for. It was something, it was an embarrassing situation because there are procedures, just as you have asked sometimes ago and I told you, there are some procedures that they have had to be followed. There is an appropriate authority to announce a, a, a results, and there are ways and means to which results will be collated and all and all, which in Adamawa State it was not followed. And I'm really surprised about Adamawa because of all the states that took part in the elections, it's only Adamawa that had this type of nonsensical uh, attitude, uh, reaction. And to me, it's something that should be investigated seriously. Um, I will not know, but from the grapevine, I learned that the wreck has been talking from hiding, and of course, he's been pointing fingers at another political party, and that uh, they have been carried, they had carried out some controlled activity, and he wanted to right the wrong, and so on and so forth. So, to me, for the truth to come out in the open, the wreck must be given adequate protection under the law, even if he's uh, a guilty person. It is, he is presumed innocent until he has been found guilty by a court or tribunal of competent jurisdiction and properly so set up. So, to me, what I want to be done is that the whole activity surrounding the Adamawa election be investigated seriously. This time around, it was a normal investigation that we have in, in Nigeria, where after the investigation, uh, the, 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 the matter or whatever results is swept under the carpet. What I'm saying this is that if this, what happened in Adamawa, is allowed to stay or just uh, go on notice, then some people will try it again some other time and it's going to be a bad precedent. And that's why in order not to be a bad precedent, the best way out is for the, uh, for even the nation as a whole, the federal government, INEC, the Nigerian police, DSS, all of them to mount individual, they can do it separately uh, fire investigation of the, what has happened. At the end of the day, they now bring everything to the fore 
under a joint uh, resolution or a press conference or even a joint action to bringing it to the fore for Nigerians to know and for all uh, and, and of course to use all those who are found wanting use them as scapegoats or scape elephants to be a deterrent to others who want to perpetrate short conduct in future because really what happened in Adamawa is an embarrassing situation how can and why will in, in, in a simple process may now be turned into a war into a, a, a serious uh, embarrassing situation as we had between the two political gladiators in, an, in Adamawa state to me it shouldn't be and it should be investigated seriously mm. now the the aftermath of that as reported by the nation newspaper this morning is that the, the woman at the center of it all uh, Binani Aisha to Ahmed has now withdrawn her suit from uh, the, the court. Did, did you, for once, um, as a legal practitioner, think that she was uh, any suit she filed would have held water in, in the court of law? Well, uh, you see, politics is another thing, law is another thing. The way politicians behave is quite interesting. Uh, I've, I've, I've done something that I've seen in matter that indeed there are infringements of rights and abuse and of due process. And we are marching on, we prepared all our briefs, all our processes. We are about to file and we are halted by our client who is a, polit who is a politician. And of course, there's nothing we can do. He is a client, he gave us an instruction and we have to work with his instruction. So, uh, the, uh, the Binan you know why she decided to uh, withdraw her suit uh, again uh, maybe to second level of what uh, the issue you raised maybe she had no matter she has no facts to fight to, to continue the matter so be that as it may you know in law if someone does not pursue his matter today there will be a situation where there will be such a situation that will crop up again and it will be pursued and of course all we want is that we want the, the democratic space to be enriched and the political process to be f uh, to be expanded. We don't want it to be castrated. We don't want it to be short-circuited. And of course, we don't want it to be disturbed in any way. And what has happened in Adam uh, Adamawa State is an attempt to disturb the political process. So if one of the parties now feel that, well, she wants peace to reign, so be it. But again, there are one way or the other, just as I said earlier on, I want and, uh, the, the whole procedures and the processes that took place to be interrogated and uh, the result and the, the result of the investigation be made known to to the world so that uh, there will not be such repeat of such activities again okay so uh, now the another uh, we'll soon move over from adama but one of the rhetorics that came up from adama was the fact that immediately the wreck who should not have declared the result declares that result Everybody who supported the woman kept shouting, go to court, go to court. Now, does that speak to how people see the judiciary? Because if you know that you are in the wrong, on the wrong side of the law, you should be scared of going to the court. What do you think gave people that confidence that anybody can go to court despite them being uh, their aggrieved party? Well, going, there are two ways here. It's unfortunate that we have a two-way situation in Nigeria. It's true a situation that encourages people to go to court in an electoral process because uh, it's only in Nigeria that you have elections. You have elections worldwide. And once the electoral process has been concluded by the courts, generally, generally now, it's just one or two exceptions in some one or two countries. And of course, those people now took cue from Nigeria that they now go to court. Generally, when an election takes place, the result announced, everybody goes back to his cocoon. Everybody goes back to the tent to prepare for the next general election. But what we have in Nigeria is that uh, once an election takes place, even before the result is announced, if you have people take, talking about the going to court, that the electoral uh, election tribunal be set up quickly, or that be, they should be constituted so that uh, they will have an opportunity to go to court. The reasons for going to court really is not is out of it because the elections and the electoral law per se really did not give 
room and did not contemplate uh, in, in that initially the court the, the issue of installing candidates and, part, um, and uh, candidates particularly through the law courts it is the people that will decide and that's why in most cases a situation where candidates who don't have the general mandate and now are now looked upon by such candidates who are now returned by the court as a court returned or court appointed or court voted and a governors or house of rep people or senators or even president i don't think it should be the way and i don't think it should be the norm and i think that we should look at this issue seriously the court is a, is a place where you should go for uh, adjudication for civil matters electoral matters uh, should just be left in the hands of uh, the, the, the uh, uh, appropriate authority which is INEC. the only thing is the second leg is that issues of malfeasance as has happened in an adamawa state we uh, weren't going to court but this court issue now is caused because people know one way or the other that they can rig and once they rig themselves in there is an appropriate quarters for them to now even further entrench themselves it is maybe in one way or the other, it's a very extreme situation that we have a uh, situation or extreme cases that we have situation where people who read now eventually benefit the the the, 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 the outcome of the arrogant but in some in most in some cases it is not so it's not here and there but definitely i don't subscribe to people taking matters to court uh, for electoral matters because to all intents and purposes it foists on the people people with someone who is not uh, a popular candidate uh, because I handle election matters and I know that one little technical issue may flaw a candidate even who had overwhelming votes and you can be sure that when those are listening and watching this program knows about a situation in which somebody who did who came third or fought in an election became the number one through the instrumentality of the judiciary and even somebody in another state who never contested the election itself became the uh, was declared the governor elect or even was sworn in as a governor through the instrumentality equally of the court system so to me i think it's an uh, is an aberration it's a, uh, something that should not be encouraged i will even talk to our politician to learn how to win and to lose you win you win squarely you lose you lose squarely and let it be. You come again another day. Not that you must be a do and die thing. It shouldn't be a do and die do and die thing. Okay. So um, let's let's now get over, uh, back to um, all the issues at hand now. The election petitions, the the attacks by everybody. What would you say at the moment is the level of trust and confidence that Nigerians have in the judiciary? The judiciary still remains the last hope of the common man. And anyone who does not have hope in the judiciary, they let him take to the streets and let's see what will happen. Mm. We call it self-help in law. And you cannot take to self-help. They are authorities. You can't take one and leave the other. You can't approbate and reprobate. You want peace. And the only process that can guarantee peace is a system that encourages peace. And that system that encourages peace is the judiciary. Because when people want to go against the law, when people have infraction with the law, it is the judiciary that brings them to order. Let me give you a very simple example. I have a, 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 my daughter went to court with me yesterday because we were on holidays. And she now saw some people in handcuffs and said, why is it that they are held there, that they are joined together? You know, two of them were joined together. I said, well, it's for people who have committed one thing or the other and that they are brought to court to face justice. He said, what is justice? I said, justice is to make sure that people who did not do well are punished. And now, unfortunately, the Black Mariah now is not the Black Mariah. I guess it's a green van. It was just ahead of us there. And I pointed to him, her that that is where they put them 
eventually took them to the correctional center. I didn't call it prison. They said, where is the correction? Would they correct them? Yeah, I see, as when they are locked up there, they now begin to behave, think, ah, I shouldn't do this. Ah, I, if I have the opportunity, I won't do that again. All of a sudden, she now said, ah, that, there are some people inside the vehicle. I said, yes. Those are the people, that, those that you saw in court will be taken inside that vehicle and they take them away. I said, I'm sure you two will learn now that you must behave yourself. She said, Daddy, I'll be behaving myself. So that's what, again, it, it can be done. And even use this opportunity, I want to use this opportunity to talk to our proprietors, school proprietors, proprietresses, uh, that little level of primary school to begin to visit prison yards to take, so that the children who, want, who have some little idea of not being stubborn or toward activities will know that no, we should not do it. Because cultism, 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 we have them in primary schools now, not to talk of secondary schools and not to talk to our, about our universities. So if this thing can be eradicated, then definitely that's one aspect. And just, I just delve into the judiciary. The importance of the judiciary cannot be overemphasized in, a, in any democratic system, even in the military system, even in a chaotic system. As Sudan, as they are chaotic in Sudan now, they still need a, a, a judicial system to bring in law and order. Once the officers have arrested people, they can't just lock people up. They must follow the rule of law. And the rule of law is that anyone who is arrested must make sure that he fits the rule of law. He makes sure that he fits the court of law. He makes sure that he fits justice. So if you now say that you don't believe in the judiciary, what do you want to believe? a rule of the jungle, then definitely nobody can thrive in the rule of the jungle. All of us want judiciary because judiciary is is, 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 is definite. In law, we call it stare decisis. Uh, decisis. There is a precedent. You follow this precedent. You know that anybody who has stolen, if he's caught, will be willing to go for it. And those who are innocent, they will be set free. It's as simple as that. And anything apart from that definitely will cause chaos. And I don't think anybody will want chaos, no matter who you are. Even brigands, rogues, thieves, the robbers, they too want a peaceful society. That's why they will never come out. You don't see armed robbers coming out and say, I'm a robber. You ask people in the, in the public place, what's your uh, profession? You, you say that. What they will say is that you are businessmen. Nobody says, I'm a, I'm a robber. I'm a robber. A witch or a wizard does not come out to say, I'm a witch or a wizard because they know the implication. So because of that, all of us want a peaceful society. And because we all want a peaceful society, then definitely there must be a judicial system that will ensure that there is peace. When the police or the judiciary, the, the, the arm of the executive, which is the uh, police and the, and the security agents particularly, do their job of arresting or, uh, or, or restraining people from doing the wrong thing, they now take them to face the law. And the only place you can face the law is the judiciary. We cannot give up. We cannot lose hope on the judiciary. All we can continue to do is to improve on the judicial system. And that's what I said some few minutes ago that after this uh, whole Ubuhaha, then we'll now sit down again, look at the electoral law, and look at the judicial system that will uh, help the judi electoral system so, uh, so as to ensure that uh, democracy thrives. And we have a same balance of peace in Nigeria. You see that in other countries, there are institutions that are set up that nobody, nobody dares overreach that institution. If you overreach it, you are in soup. And you know what is happening in America now against the former president. That's why we are going in Nigeria. Nobody is above the law, and nobody should think he's above the law, because no matter who you are, the law is above you. Okay. Oh, well, so thank you very much. Uh, we're so glad to have had you join us on the show this morning, uh, Barrister Ogwade. Uh, thank you for your time on the show this morning. Some insight you've given us, and we hope that the judiciary will do the right thing and dispense justice the right way uh, when, we, when, when matters eventually get to court. To God, to God, to God, to God be the glory. Okay. Thank you for having me. To right. God be the glory. Have a lovely day. Another break, and when we come back, we're bringing our other guests to look at some issues are still occurring in the country. Just stay with us.
Turn it up! It's the Wild Wild West. And Western Spring Television is pulling out all the stops to make sure that you don't miss out on every of the fun and happenings around you. Yup, we've got you covered because your girls got all the juiciest tidbits and entertainment news from around the world. Cross over to the chocolatey side of entertainment. Join me, Chocolate Cassie, on Eccentric as we take you into every bit of the juiciest news, fashion, music, movie updates, and other trending conversations. Together on the show, we'll get personal with your favorite celebrities via phone call, Zoom, or even live here in the studio. Eccentric will be shown on your TV screen on Western Spring Television, channel 190, only on Star Time. This iconic African presents the narrative of a man destined to exert an imperishable global influence in Western education. His was a story of a freeborn, captured and sold into slavery. He was born in Oshogun, a native Yoruba village near Isei in Okyogun axis of southwest Nigeria. Samuel Ajayi Crowder was the foundation student of Fora Bay College, Sierra Leone, the foremost university where the pioneer set of native Africans were educated. Samuel Ajayi Crowder's greatest contribution to humanity was his translation of the Holy Bible into the Yoruba language. The man who offered the Yoruba dictionary was also credited with the translation of English classic hymns into Yoruba and the Ekwere languages. Samuel Ajayi Crowder's private residence in Badagri, incidentally, the first story building in Nigeria, is an Akaba museum dedicated to the memory of Africa's first bishop. Western Spring Television identifies Samuel Ajayi Crowder as a watershed character in history. The 1914 Amalgamation Treaty is synonymous to the birth of Nigeria. Frederick Lugard, a British Army captain and All right, welcome back to the show. It's still morning spring on Western Spring Television. We're bringing, we're reaching you live from Star Times Channel 190 on the DTT platform. And of, of course, you can follow us on all our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Western Spring Television. We're joined in the, in the, in, in the studio now by Bersum, uh, Moses Abaditon, also a legal practitioner and a human rights activist. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we're looking at, um, the, again, the aftermath of the elections, the petitions that have been flying here and there. The, the, the latest news now is that Aisha Benani, for the Mara State, has withdrawn her suit from the court. What do you make of that? Well, she has no option because uh, what she wanted from the court, time and the result has overtaken it. Mm. I want the court to cause the INEC to get her validated. And since the old things has even turned against her, she has no option than to. And the lawyer said they've gone to court to ask uh, for the withdrawal of the suits, which was eventually you know, dismissed. So I think, that, I think that's uh, is normal. Mm. Okay, so now let's let's look at um, all of the other petitions. I was just asking our other guest, if you think, I know you're a lawyer, you're going to speak for the judiciary, but do you think that with the kind of conversations you've heard about petitions on the streets from uh, close people, do you think that there's so much confidence in the judiciary to, to dispense justice in, in this case? Well, we expect the judiciary to give their best because the country depends on them. And there is the saying that said that the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. And since the election has taken place, and people expect the judiciary to do the needful. Uh, yes, there are maybe moments in time past where judiciary let people down. But the stake today is high. And the expectation is just beyond uh, ordinary uh, people in the streets. And so we expect judiciary to be up and doing and uh, uh, assist the country to move forward. So I expect the judiciary will give their best in this particular one. But one thing we need to remember, the court will only adjudicate on what is put before them. And once they are able to look at it, and if the first one does not you know, give the best, they have the, whichever fails 
uh, uncomfortable can go to the Supreme Court, which will be the final habitat. But to me, I feel uh, they will do, do justice to all the parties involved. All right. So one other thing that is going around, especially on social media now, is people saying that they want the proceedings to be televised. You know, do you do you buy into that? I agree. As we allowed the, the judiciary themselves to be on their toe, knowing fully well that there are other individuals, you know, in, in, in the world, there are three judgments. There is the, 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 the common mind, the streets, there is the judicial, and then there is the divine, which is God. So let the common mind, the streets, follow the procedure. They will know if things have been done, and they will eventually agree with whatever is the outcome. Why keeping it secret? So let it be done. It has been done before, and it can be done. You know, it can, one man talked before, I'm not talking of Nigeria, in some other country. They give you the day-to-day -day procedure. This is what happened, and you, you begin to watch it. So I don't see a reason why the, the judiciary should be afraid. So let it be open, and then everybody will be satisfied with the outcome. Hmm. All right. So now our other guest mentioned, you know, that there were always issues with technicalities. Now, what what exactly on what basis do does the judiciary now judges or justices give their judgment let's look at technicalities and what, what are the other what exactly is a technicality in a case okay before we to talk about technicality, let's look at those things that the judiciary is expecting mm. when you come before a court either it's tribunal or civil or criminal there are three main things expected of you number one you produce document Number two, you call witnesses. Number three, you bring the law that, you know, supports whatever argument you have come. And so when you now come before the court, your document was not convincing because in the in, in, in the election petition, you must prove beyond reasonable doubt that what you are seeing is convincing and the panel will be able to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. So if what you have brought in terms of document, okay, this is the form EC8, this is the, the, the ones that brought from here. This is the collation center. This is the one issued to the security. This is the one the party are producing. And then they were able to be, be, bring the beavers and everything. If you are not able to get this one, you should know you have a challenge. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you should be able to call witnesses. In Nigeria today, if you are petitioner against election, uh, not being uh, fair and fair, or maybe there's a, a, a problem, uh, that you must produce people at every polling unit to be able to tell that the election held at Kuro Lodja, the market square at so so and so date this thing was not properly done it was rigged so there must be somebody who participate at that unit so quite often most political party cannot bring witness imagine the number of polling units you are going to call not just one state you are calling the whole states where you feel the election has been tampered with so if you don't have enough witness, and then you say, uh, in Kuro Lodger Market, this is what happened on this day, and they say, where are the witness? And you don't have. That is a minus. Then the law that sacrosanct, that's okay. This is what Section 60 said. Whoever is controlling this election, he must do this one. Whatever is the paper must be equal to the number of uh, the accredited. If you state everything, if you are bringing this, and you now realize that even though you have this law, then your witness are not enough, but you have enough documents. So, if you are going like that as an you know, an experienced uh, lawyer, you will look at your opponent. In which area can you come so as to be able to see that you you knock him out? Number one, before you come to election tribunal, you have twenty one days. If that man failed and he came on the twenty second day, you start with that one. My Lord, sir, you cannot even listen to him. He filed his case very late. You know very well you have one or two things. So that's technicality. Then if they are going to look, because it's technicality, but it's also law, because it is one of the conditions. Then on the other hand, when you look around and say, okay, even the motion, this motion is not supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, using so and so, you mentioned one or two things that is of that. The way he came before the court is not proper. That you ought to have used, uh, uh, you know, another, you know, you mentioned one or two things that you ought to have done. Now, I'll give you an example. The, the, the case of uh, the Senate president, even though he wasn't at the primary uh, of the APC, 
then somebody has a match. He has consented as a, 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 as a presidential candidate of APC. But at the end of the way he failed, he came back home. Normally, there is a law that says you cannot consent twice in the same, for, uh, twi uh, you cannot consent twice for two slots within the same period. That should have knocked him out. But then his lawyer looked at it and said the motion the other opponent brought was not proper. That you know not to have come with that kind of motion. And people are now saying that in law, especially on election, that you should do substantive justice. You don't look at this technicality. But that one, that one and that, I know you give the 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 the, 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 um, the Supreme Court the bad name. They say, ah, when your law says somebody cannot contest as president and as a senate, somebody has a match, and here you give you know that kind of thing. Now let's leave that one. Let's go to Imo. In Imo, when the president, the governor is sitting, he, he, when the result came out, he got fourth position. Now, Elhakim was, I think, that, I think that should, no, uh, 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 was the governor elected. I was already there. And then he came to the tribunal and said, no, that man cannot be governor. How come? He said, you now begin to gather the things. How do you gather it? They say the police have them get it, that kind of thing. And before we know it, a new result, which was never known, was calculated. And people are saying, no, you can't do that. That kind of thing. <laughs> but today, if it is today, Viva will knock that one out. Because that one might have somebody, I'm just trying to, I'm not saying I'm that I know. The, so that one, somebody might have cooked up those results, either yes or no. But the beavers cannot, you can't get it done in time like this. So when you're talking of technicality, we're just simply saying that maybe if you realize you have a shortcoming in this area, you have to, then look at it. How can you knock up? It's just like in football. You answer now. And then you are meeting Manchester. But uh, by, at, at, at half time, you are ready to go down. The second term, you are three goes down. And how do you win? The next thing you do, you go for the leg of the, the, the person who is, who is always entering 18. Mm. By the time you knock him out and you show one, even though they are going to give one yellow card, you realize they will not be rushing to 18. Those are some of the technical things in football. Because they strong. know you break their leg. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in law, too, you find such a thing, don't worry, we know how to handle them. So these are the things people call technicalities. Even total, it's not totally off record, but it's not permissible quite often. But they have uh, encouraged those in tribunal not to rely on technicality, but rather look at those ones. The Neymar was claiming that he was rigged. Did it actually qualify? Because you can even see some of the things they are raising now. Those are some areas. Are you qualified? Don't you have dual citizenship? Uh, do you pay tax? And I remember in 1979, when Zeke was to contest, the first thing his opponent did was to go to court and say Zeke didn't pay tax. And no Zip made the man of himself. He quickly run back to the tax office and obtain. And then when he came to court, he said the law said when and if due. And so you can see how he solved it. So it's not left for those people whom they are being attacked that you didn't have this one, you didn't have this one, you didn't have to now look at how do they now come and nullify whatever thing. So in, in law, uh, nobody holds your hand. It's you who also study your opponent, just like in football too, and say, okay, if they are rushing at 18, and we can also plan and fall in the 18. And that will give us a penalty. And that will be the end of the whole story. So technically, these are part of law. But then it should not be the overall. Because if it happened like that, the people in the street, that's why people ask them, to choice, let's begin to wash it. The police will, will they go into the street and say, no, they have robbers. That is not. In 1979, I'm talking about, I will call it technicality. The law, as at that time said, for any president to emerge, because that time we have 19 states. That president must win uh, 25% in 13 states. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the, the MPN won in 12 states. And when the case came up, the law on the ground that if there is a, a, a stalemate, they will not go for electoral college. But because of one reason or the other, because somebody said, and those who are listening know what, that a particular Person in power that time said the best may not emerge. And looking at the grants at that time, the best in the land as at that time was Shifa Bafema Law. But in time of election, he scored six. He won in six states. MTN won in 12 states. So how do we know? So, so, how will these people now show technically so that they don't go back to the electoral college? The electoral college will now be another second election. As at that time, three other parties will gang up against MPN. And eventually they will lose. And what are the parties? We have 
the MPP by uh, Zik. We have Great Nigerian People's Party by um, Alaji Waziri Ibrahim. Then we have PRP by Aminu Kanu. Aminu Kanu may not join them, but these two people, if they come together with UPN, the MPP will be out. And then somebody came with technicality, and that was Richard Jackson, the son, and said, Look, he may not have won in, in 20, but then in Kanu, it's quite a particular fraction. So we can't. In the mathematics, you know, sometimes when you have a 99.9999, it can be 100 percent And so that's that why they call it 12 to 12. And that's how they knock the story out. And then they quickly amend that electoral college is no more in the election. So it's always here and there when people try to answer. And the man was made the attorney general of the federation because of that job he did. Mm. So these are some of the things you find in an election. All right. Now I'm sure you've gone through, you've you've seen some of the petitions filed by the the the, the, the aggrieved parties at this time that's APC, the pdp and the labor party challenging the declaration of tinubu as president elect by INEC. now INEC has also filed responses apc has filed responses to both but INEC is coming under attack from Artic one ob is it INEC's job to defend its candidate to defend whoever it declares as winner, or they are also supposed to, um, you know, say, okay, let's look at it factually. Let's let's not be biased. Let's not try to defend our own result. How does it work with INEC? Let's look at it from ethical ground. Mm. You are the ones who interview me, and the process of my interview, I made a job. I hit the president, and I've gone. And then they say, Mr. Biden spoke something against the president. They must do for him. How about the man who interview me? Will you be against me? Because you are the one that told the question. So you, are, you must be for me. So who conduct the election? INEC. They say, INEC, you didn't do your work. Will you say you didn't do your work? He was I do my work. And so quite often, because I've been privileged to be in an election tribunal, the INEC will all be in favor of the result they declare in order to defend what they, Because if they say, ah, we didn't do it, they are simply owing up. Even though they may be wrong, but they will not agree with you. They will say, we've done this one, we've done this one. So quite often, the INEC will be on the people they have declared as the victor. So it's not left for the other opponent to now take on INEC and say, you didn't do your job. At the appropriate time when this is the election results are supposed to be transferred, you didn't do it. And then if they are able to convincingly convince the tribunal, then whatever INEC might have said is irrelevant. So for them to now attack INEC either at the tribunal or on the social media is not necessary. It is the normal thing. In fact, do you know that most of the people who defend INEC are not INEC staff? They engage lawyer. They pay them millions, if not billions, who will now work as a counsel. They are, they are private lawyers. They are not working with INEC, maybe as their staff. So they, if, if you pay me for it, will I not defend your interest? You gave me, I said, yes, we declare this result. This is what we have. This is what we have. Either you make error. Now it's for me to now fan tune and say, I will can convince you. And say, the man we said, actually, man, this is how we arrive at this situation. Now let's look at a bad side. The one that happened in Adama, will INEC be against uh, the, the, the Fintiri? No, because the man has exposed the weakness of INEC by jumping the gun, usurping power, and declare result that is not yet ready. So there is no way how INEC can come and defend that one. They will simply say that man is on his own. So, but in a situation where their officer, if you look at section 60, it talks about it, the returning officer the number of votes casted, the number of ballot paper destroyed, everything has been reported back to INEC. They will give this one to their, you know, the lawyer and say, this is what we do. This is what our result, and this is what we result, and this is our writing. And so in the INEC too, they also have legal department who will also help them to get all this material ready. So it's not for the, 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 the lawyer they engage to now go ahead and say, ah, as far as we are concerned, INEC has done a beautiful job. This is the story. And most of them who are even saying, they are saying it because the game is, is not favorable. It is something that has happened over and over. Yeah, the Supreme Court have won INEC and said, INEC, whenever you are doing this one, don't try to be biased. But I'm saying, humanly speaking, if I cook stew and then I bring it to the table and then they said, who is the one that cooked this? Will I not say I'm the one? Either it's palatable or not palatable. So INEC is the one that cooked the stew. They are the ones that have the agents. They are the ones that have all their member and various polling units in the Federation. And so definitely they will say, we have done our best. So nobody ever say, I'm wrong, when you know 
you are wrong. It is not left for those people who are going to judge you to either determine your fate. Mm. Okay, so it's expected of INEC to come to court to defend, to defend whatever job they have done. And that, if, let's assume, you said Bola to me is the winner. Will I now come to court and say, sorry, Bola to me did not win? Then they'll say, are you blind? Are you not the one that declared? And that's why I said, ethically, even humanly speaking, since I'm the one that said, your son that you brought to my class pass. But then who write the results? That my son passed. But the, the paper, if you do the exam, it's not reading as the result you wrote. They say, Will the child not say it's the one that wrote it? That is INA for you. They are the one who supervise the ethnic. They are the one who organize it. They are the one who announce it. So definitely they cannot come later and say, we are sorry it wasn't so. If they're so, then they lack credibility. And then the government appoint them, will fire them because they did not do their job. So they must defend whatever they have done and they have led them to that level, to the level of crisis. But do you know the beauty of democracy in other land? I was told in Britain for more than 100 years, that was around 1923. That was the last time there was electoral petition in, 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 in Britain until recently. So why is our own like that? It is simply because the recruitment of electoral umpire are not properly done. You don't pick people who are a member of your political party to come and be umpire. They cannot give you the base. Though they will claim they are not member. But we have seen some. I even know some. Before their appointment, they write beautiful things for the government that is in power. So when they get there, how would they have a neutral man? It's just like some years back when you go and watch uh, either shooting star or bender insurance and you now bring somebody from beneath to come and you know, look with the, the game between a uh, shooting star and Bender Shora and the mice from Bini. Ha! Ah, say no go return to, to Bini. So these are some of the things that allow us every time there must be that kind of thing. Then two, why don't we use the best method that we feel will suit our culture? In our culture, just if you look at the paper today, the governor of Oyo is saying that we will have to be taking time before electing the Allah of Oyo. Mm. Uh -huh. And the man has died over a year now. But in time past, if you follow the culture, if I look at Sorodayo, they are your son, so who is the next person to become the Allah for you? And if I will speak, but today, speak, if I doesn't speak again, it's Nara that speaks. So when Nara speaks, there are going to be conflicts. So we have seen in our country where people are donated jeeps because they want to become traditional ruler. Uh -huh. Maybe 10 years later, they will remove them because they didn't follow the procedure. So if we have done the, 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 the electoral committee or commission properly, that there are people we know as professors, we know as critics of government, with people like the, the man from who used to be in charge of uh, election in uh, Aquaibom. Uh, I forgot his name now. You bring people like that at the election, then you have free, fair election. But when you have people well, you, you cannot trust, and people have a carryover, like the uh, deal we're talking uh, 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 in Adamawa, you definitely you are going to have conflicts of interest. Yes, of course. Now, a lot of persons are confused about how the petitions, the, the tribunal will sit. Now, do, would it be, um, would it be um, simultaneous? Would it be simultaneous? Would INEC be defending... Um, you know, all all the petitions at the same time, or would they be going through, you know, different, different, um, would the Labour Party petition be running side by side, INEC, um, PDP petition side by side, INEC at the same day or at the same time, or there'll be different days, you know, in court? It depends on the the panel though, that set them up. Mm. Since we call it presidential panel. panel. There's sometimes they, they can bring the case together. Okay. Those representing APC, those representing, well, you know, APC is the main, uh, will, be, uh, will, will be the respondent. While other who are petitioner, they will mention a party, a, B, C, 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 depending on the number of parties that come. If it's convenient for them, they could, but since their prayer are similar, so they will only be, okay, uh, today we are hearing you, tomorrow they call the other lawyer for the other party, so it could be done. So, and, and the other time, if they have enough judge, judge, justices, because if you go to court now, most of the cases have been postponed because the judges have been you know, sent there to be part of the tribunal. Mm. So, if they felt they want accelerated hearing, there's nothing stopping them from having a section that will handle Labour Party, another one will handle the PDP. So, it depends on the 
or the judiciary that said that the, the chief justice in his own wisdom, if you know, and it's not new. So the, the, it's a matter of administrative convenience. So there's no law that said all of them must come into the same spot. Mm -hmm. But justice must be given to them, irrespective. Okay, so when people go to court, we, you know, talking about election tribunals and all of that, the justices who sit on this case, for, for example, now the presidential uh, petition election, mm -hmm. uh, election petition, where does it start from? Do, are we looking at directly from the appeal court? Or would they be starting at the high court? No, at the appeal court. Appeal court. Okay, yes. so that gives them... After that one, is the Supreme Go court. to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Now, the finality of the Supreme Court makes things dicey in some cases, especially when um, people look at the cases and say, okay, it should have gone this way, it may have gone this way. How extensive is the, the examination of the Supreme Court on, on some of these case, uh, cases, how how ex, how extensive is is their um, their work? The Supreme Court is uh, made a bit easier because by the time you get there, all you simply need to do is the, uh, the the judgment you got in the Court of Appeal, you will now for uh, bring them forward and then ask the Supreme Court that this judgment, the judge, the justice area in this area, in this area, and this as a result. You, you expect the Supreme Court to please review it in your favor. Mm. So over there, because I've been privileged to be at the Supreme Court, all they simply do is for you to just address them, maybe one or two occasions, the next one is judgment. So it's in the Supreme Court, is a, 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 the, the procedure is faster, in the sense that most of the work had already been done at the Court of Appeal, documents have been separated, a lot of things, arguments have been taken, and they will read through. The writing of the justice, they want to verify if all that they have said are the facts. On the ground. So when the Supreme Court now look at this one, by the time they now either agree or disagree, they will only pick what the judge have done, where they have done wrong, or where they have, have been appropriate, and then dispense justice. But they also have a, a number of these that they need to go through so that they will not just listen to you and give you judgment the next day. No. I haven't stated your case and said, this is our judgment, but this is what we now ask the Supreme Court to do. They will receive it. And you move it. And once you move, and the court will now give you, they will tell you, they will tell you when the judgment is ready. Mm. It may not be on the, the, the just the day you appear, that I said, because the day you come to present, there will be another day when you have to come and adumbrate or explain or argue, whatever it's at the area you want the Supreme Court to look at. So when you now do that one, the Supreme Court will now take time to go and look from the beginning of the, the whole process, the document, the process of at the court of appeal, the people that testify where the other judges might have done justice or have done wrong, when they have looked at this one, they now come with their own judgment. And once their judgment has come, it becomes a finality. Mm. Okay, so how, how long now, what will be the process? How many days are we looking at when it gets to the court of appeal? Well, when you go to the Court of Appeals, because normally yeah, at the governorship level, they have 180 days, which is six months. But in the presidential, I'm not so sure of the day, but I know it could take up to six months. And that's why people are now calling. You know, that means from the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court, it could take us the next six months or less. I'm not so sure of the particular numbers of this, but I know. They will give them time so that everybody can present his facts, argue. Uh -huh. And remember, it's not just one party. It's about at least six political parties are coming. Even a party that is uh, lost in 2019, I learned one has just gone to court and asked him for some. So they will all want to listen to him and then give him the judgment. So I haven't stated all these days, all the time they need to do. They, they, don't, they cannot stop the swearing of the man who won the election. Because some people are saying, please don't swear in. And these are reasons that kind of, they will swear because if the Lord now disfavor him, or is now the judgment is not against the person's warning, there's nothing wrong with removing him. It has happened at governorship. I'll give you an example of Imo State. So it can happen, except it has not happened at the presidential level in Nigeria. So uh, to us, we felt uh, the, 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 no matter how long, justice must actually uh, be ensured it's uh, given to those people who have come before it. Mm. Okay, so as we begin to wrap up now, I've just been, um, you know, forwarded the, the, the response of um, Yunusa Hudu Ari, who was a REC, President Electoral Commissioner in um, Adamawa State. He, he has written 
um, you know, reports saying that at the end of the day, uh, the actions of two national commissioners left much to be desired. Said he received this security report from the commissioner of police that Boko Haram insurgents from neighboring state were recruited by some politicians to cut away sensitive materials. Now, he's also saying that he directed electoral officers and local government coalition officers to ensure results should be done at a centralized INEC annex office. Says at that point, the national commissioner quietly and secretly gave out conflicting counter directives. It says while he was preparing for state coalition and all of that, someone called him and informed him that the national commissioners declared he was nowhere to be found, and he saw some people sleeping, including the national, uh, you know, commissioners. Now he's saying that he had received report that from calls and due to pressure and numerous calls from party agents and candidates of parties threatening to cause mayhem says to avert the impending danger he received authentic results submitted by the presiding officers says armed policemen from government house came to his house placed him under arrest to prevent him from conducting his legitimate duties now he's saying that he declared the winner based on the highest number of valid votes scored by the candidate of the all progressives congress i, I mean he's saying something saying that there was an intelligence report that two national commissioners were at government house Yola. Now, what he's saying now contradicts what INEC has declared. How do we marry these two things? He's saying that for some reasons, he declared what he's referring to as authentic result. And INEC has already declared a winner in the election. How do we put this, this together? Well, to me, I would say it's afterthought. Mm. If he's so bold like that, the people who is your boss, who is managing you, invite you to come and state your case, you refuse to go there, they call you on phone, you didn't go there. Now you are writing, after the whole thing has bolted and said, it's because of this. If there is insecurity, your commissioner of police was sitting with you, DSS director was sitting with you, my other NSDC was sitting with you, what effort do they, they are the ones supposed to gather information, they are the ones supposed to increase whatever it is, whatever is the insecurity, you have a headquarter, you put a phone call, to, uh, court, uh, a phone call to Yakubu and said, sir, there's insecurity here. And even what did the law say? The law is that when you are not sure of security of that election, you can call for a postponement, notwithstanding that it's a wrong. You can see shift it and said, we're not sure. Because the report given to us was that these people are coming. Or you improve the security you know, uh, network in that area so that nobody comes to destroy lives or, or destroy property. But you didn't do this one. Even the result, you, you mentioned somebody's result. You didn't mention the second result. So where did you get your result? And where they are even saying? That's why I say it's, it's, it's an afterthought. The result is still being collated. You are supposed to be the chief host. You are the residential electoral commissioner. So the man who is, who is called, supposed to be the returning officer is a visitor. It's somebody you welcome. It's somebody you can talk and say, look, you are the returning officer. I've had the insecurity security here. Please come here. Let's go to the police and so as to fortify this one. You didn't discuss with that person. You went on your own. And now that the chip is down, and not only that, you also encouraged the woman went to the, uh, the NTA. You didn't go to China. Now, do you know if it is China that read that by today, China, they will have locked it up. Mm. Or, yeah, they will sanction it. But today, no, no query was given to NTA. So it is, it is a tooth and boob story that cannot stand. It's not, it, even before court, they, he will still be able, they will ask, yeah, okay, so where is, the, where is the police officer that giving the information? The commission of police was saying, he has not spoken to you today, or have you heard him saying anything? So they are the ones who give you and say, yeah, the DSL, we are the ones that submit it because we knew Boko Haram is about to attack. And if Boko Haram is about to attack, the law says, when you are not sure of security, postpone. There's nothing wrong in postponing that rerun election. So these are some of the things we've heard. The man is on his own. Mm. If he's so bold, let him come out. Let, he, has he come out? Let him make himself available to the police so that he can be brought to court for prosecution. Because what he has done is he's supposed to go to, 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 to jail for three years or pay five million mm. or both. So for discarding false result, for stopping somebody's power. So let him come. Let him come before the court. If he's sure of this, these are the facts. If, if that one is, is good enough as his defense. Oh, well, so we'll wait to see how all of this pans out in the coming days. Our response is particularly, you know, interesting.
Anyway, that's where we end the show this morning. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Moses Obadit, for joining us again on, on the show. Thank, Thank you, you for your time always. My name is Emmanuel Lujadigil, and I'll see you tomorrow on the TGIF edition of the program.